All right, so I have a layout here that has a lot of padding on each section because we want a lot of white space. It makes things look a little bit nicer along the way. Uh, the issue with anything like this is while it can look fantastic at large screen sizes, it doesn't necessarily work as much on smaller screens but there's another limitation to this as well, which is when we get onto horizontal devices, it really eats into a lot of the space that's there. And that sort of ruins the experience a little bit. And the issue with this, of course, is that when we have a site like this, um, you know, building in media queries for something like this to get it to adjust along the way for every possible thing. We have a media query maybe for smaller screen sizes, then if they're in portrait mode and it's just hard to maintain. You're sort of guessing at when things should happen. There's a much easier way to do it. And you can actually do it with just one line of CSS. And we're gonna be looking at how to do that in this video. All right, so let's jump in and take a look at how we can change this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is instead of um, padding here, I am gonna do padding block, which is the top and bottom padding only. And with that, I can take this off. This is a logical property, so it should look exactly the same. This is literally just saying padding top and bottom, but it's a logical property. Uh, and I like that just because it can't accidentally reset anything. If you don't know about logical properties, there's a link in the description to a video where I deep dive those recently. Um, so I have padding block, which is gonna be my padding top and my padding bottom. And as I said, 10 rem is I think looks good at large screen sizes when you want the white space, but we want to get rid of it when we're in different situations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this with a min function. And the min function will take the smaller of two different values. So what we could do is come in here and say uh, 10 viewport height comma 10 rem. And then it's going to choose whichever of those is smaller. And actually to highlight this a little bit, I am going to make this like 30 uh, or just because it's going to help show us what's happening. So the VH here, viewport height, uh, so it's pretty much 30% of my viewport height. Um, but what happens is if that 30 is smaller, you can see it actually starts shrinking down and shrinking down and shrinking down. And if it grows, then it's gonna max out and it won't let it get bigger. It's not the same as locking that in at 30 VH because then it could just keep growing, growing, growing too as screen the screen size got bigger. So this gives it like an upper limit that what it could get to. Now I think 30s may be a little bit too much, so let's try 10. And again, it should sh be able to shrink down like that and then also grow, but it once again have a maximum. And you are going to have to adjust and play with the numbers a little bit to find a place where you find that it works the best. And something like that is not too bad. So now if you're on a horizontal, land, like it could just be you set up your browser so it's really flat, or it could be somebody for some reason is on their phone and holding it sideways. People do crazy things. Um, and they're on your site doing that. So then they get the padding will shrink down and not take up so much screen real estate, which is perfect. And the site doesn't look terrible. And then if they're on a larger screen and they have the room for it, it's there. And you could also even play around with this instead of VH, maybe it's a V min or a V max. You could do all sorts of interesting things. Now, if you're dealing with smaller numbers than this, you could also set this up as a clamp instead of a min. So the clamp would set a minimum, an ideal and a maximum. So then you could prevent it from getting too small as well. But I think for bigger sections like this one, a lot of the time this will be good enough. But if you want to learn more about Clamp and Min and its brother Max, I do have a video that dives into those. It is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, a really big thank you to my supporters of Awesome, both Zach and Randy, as well as all of my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.